So I decided to make a short film and I never honestly thought what could possibly go wrong. Well, apparently a lot can. No, no, no. no, no, no. Help her. Help her. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys exactly what happened when I was making my latest film, Shark Bait. In one of my previous videos, I talked about exactly how I came up with the idea for this shark film. And, and really the idea came about in a, in a very organic way. I, I wasn't definitely going out there per se trying to make like a shark film. Well, if you're ever considering doing a film out on open water, then uh, just a word of caution, it's about a thousand times more difficult than doing a film on land. Now, just so you know, I did show up to this film set very, very prepared. Like I usually do, I had detailed notes on my script, I had storyboards, and I even managed to do some uh, camera tests with like, for example, like our failed shark fin. I also made sure to schedule two days of filming on land and then additional two days of filming out on the water because almost half of the script takes place out on, on open water. Honestly though, I should have scheduled at least five days of uh, filming out on the ocean. So the first two days we were filming all the land-based scenes and we actually finished those two days ahead of schedule, which I know barely ever happens on a film set. I produced this film with Garage Filmmakers, they, they operate out of Ecuador, and, and there in Ecuador uh, they held auditions, so we did um, have a chance to meet a lot of different actors. I don't always just go for the most talented actor, uh, I also pick actors that really personify the characters that I am looking for them to play. I always look at how actors just naturally behave so that I don't have to always rely on their acting skills. And this can come in real handy when uh, you have any sort of difficult situations like we had with a lot of the, again, the water scenes that we were doing for this film. So like I said, the first two days of filming on land went super easy. Uh, it was actually very fun too. You know, behind the scenes for YouTube. Camera operator slash, this is what he does. <laughs> <laughs> after the, you know, after work. after work to make extra money. <laughs> so yeah, that, 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 that's, you know, that's the kind of people we're working with. <laughs> we started by doing the opening scene of the film uh, in, the, in our pool. And we set up this large black fabric on the bottom of the pool. Uh, partially because we wanted to hide the fact that we're filming in a pool. Because it's supposed to sort of look like, like the movie starts out, out on, on some really deep uh, water, like out in the ocean. Uh, and this actually worked out really well, worked out so well that, to be honest, now in hindsight, I don't know why I just didn't decide to shoot at least most of the water scenes that way, out there in the pool. Or even if we did all the scenes on the boats, like on some, I don't know, small lake or small body of water, somewhere where we can have more control, where we can tie off boats and things like that, where we can control the, the setting and the environment more. After we were done filming at the pool, we moved the production over to a little restaurant and uh, there we shot a whole bunch of scenes. And then we finished the day off by doing a few night scenes. And uh, like I said, we finished ahead of schedule and it was a you know, beautiful, easy day. The second day also went super smooth. Uh, we moved the production to the, the center of the, the little town of Playas we were filming in. Uh, and we did a whole mix of different scenes there uh, throughout the whole day. Uh, and, uh, and again, went super easy, you know, partially because of the, again, the crew and the, the cast was on point. Uh, but also, like I said, I was prepared. so. I have my storyboards, I have my sort of shot list, and this way it's very easy to just sort of check off each shot as you're going along and making sure that you're getting all the material in camera that you need to be able to actually edit the, the scenes later. We finished ahead of schedule, so of course I was thinking that the last two days of the production are gonna be the same. Holy crap, was I wrong. <laughs> the first off, on the morning of the third day, it right away just started with bad news. And part of it was because of some of the crew had scheduling conflicts. So I basically started off that day realizing that I now have to do in one day what I originally planned to do in two days. And like I said, I originally should have probably scheduled five days. We went out on the water and we were filming like pretty far out about like, it took about 20 minutes to go out on these, on, on these boats. We rented three different boats. And mind you, it was a pretty calm day, but a calm day on the Pacific Ocean is still 
you know, the water still moves a lot. So you're just constantly moving up and down like that. And it doesn't feel violent or anything like that, but it's just, again, if you're not used to the water, you're gonna get seasick very quickly. And that's what happened. Like half of our crew, I think most of our actors got seasick. And then on top of that, like for example, some of the actors, especially the girls, like they wanna go use the bathroom and there's nowhere to go. On land, it's no issue. Well, you can't do that when you're out on the open water. Go 20 minutes back to shore and then use the bathroom, whatever. 20 minutes to come back. So you're talking about like 40, 50 minutes. And actually one of the actresses suggested basically, you know what, if we're gonna do this. Let's just jump in the water and just, you know, do our thing. We started up pretty early, I think it was 8 a.m., but we didn't really get the first shot by like, I think it was maybe 11 a.m. I remember like we would set up the camera, put the reflector here and, you know, get the sun from that angle and all that stuff. Then we got to coordinate with the, with the boom, with the microphone to make sure that we're not getting any weird shadows from the sun on the actors or, or on the boat. You now roll the camera, I can roll the audio, slate the shot, you know, by the time I yell action, a lot of the times the bolts had already shifted and suddenly you're seeing other bolts in the background or you're seeing land and in our story, the, the characters are stuck on a little boat out on the open ocean and there's nobody around and there's no land visible. So we couldn't have land behind them. We couldn't have other boats behind them. We were, I think by the time we had to break for lunch, which was like 1 p.m., we basically had nothing done. We had a few takes done on the boat, but none of them were good takes, meaning they all had issues like boats in the background, land in the background, issues with audio, things like that. Forget about trying to be exact with it. It's just more like, okay, we got, got the coverage. Okay, next one, next one, you know? And coverage and the, and the, the acting, that's the main thing. I trust that Danny makes every shot look like it's, you know, painted by the hand of God. So. I tried to do it without a memory card on the camera, so... <laughs> <laughs> and anyways, we had to sort of stop the production for a little bit, head back to shore, and then let's sort of figure out what the hell we're gonna do for the rest of the day. I remember I was sort of going through all these scenarios in my head and thinking, okay, do we just call it quits and just try to do this production maybe, I don't know, months later? and try to do it in another, you know, again, more controlled sort of setting. After talking to my brother, who was the producer of this film, and then talking to Danny, the, the, the cinematographer, we realized that we had around eight pages left of dialogue and some action on there. And we had, by this point, around four maybe hours left of daylight. Very quickly, I was like, well, there's no way that we could actually film all of this stuff. And I had to basically butcher the script. And then the next thing was, my cinematographer just said, you know what, let's do this like a documentary. Forget about changing lenses, forget about cinema lenses, all that stuff. We were filming these little uh, Sony cameras, the Sony A6600 and 6500. You know, I have access to all these cameras. I can use a red camera, I can use whatever cameras that I want. If you don't have the money for the proper production, enough shooting days, a big enough crew, then sometimes those cameras will just simply mean it's impossible. And in this case, no way we could have filmed on a traditional cinema camera. But because we were filming on these little Sony cameras that were easy to handle, I, I would put one of them on like a little water protected kind of a housing. The other one was just always the dry camera. And then basically we put in the kit lenses so we can sort of zoom in, zoom out very quickly and kind of reframing to kind of try to make it look like we have more cameras and angles than we really did have. And try not to do any retakes or anything like that. So we explained to the actors, this is what we're doing. Action all the way to the end of the scene, cut, and that's it. Ah, yay! Boom! <laughs> You gotta be up, huh? Oh, and yeah, then here right. you go, ah! And you can push from the boat here, okay? okay. Put your legs here. Uh -huh. yeah. So this way you can... I wanna stay in the boat, boat though. Yeah. Can I go? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Pretend that you go going under, so go like this. Wow! And I, and I, I do like a, like a sink in. Yeah. Like yeah. You're on the boat. Beautiful. 
and that's kind of how we did it. The last four hours was just pure chaos. Okay, camera rolling, and the target, body up. So 48. Okay, and... You can see your hands, be careful. Lucas, you gotta put the mic lower, low, low, from below, quickly. I'm getting a shot here. Okay, still rolling. You're gonna fall here, yeah, and I'm gonna follow you. Okay, and action! <laughs> Oh my god. Something. Oh shit. Yeah, good. Cut. Okay, I need help her. Cut her. Help her. Help her. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I know this looks really bad, but actually in this case, this was just a simple misunderstanding because the actress didn't hear me yell cut, so she was still acting like she was exhausted from fighting the shark, and the crew on the boat thought that she was really about to drown. When they ran up to rescue her, she said she's okay, and then even waited in the water for me in case I wanted to do a retake. Overall, I gotta say the Ecuadorians are amazing swimmers. They just jump in the water in the middle of the ocean without any fear. Uh, there was a few moments where it was, you could say, got dangerous. Like it was a moment where I remember I was filming in the water with one of the actors. And, and again, we're filming this like a documentary. So I basically was spent the last four hours just swimming in the water. I was basically directing while I was floating around the boat. And I had the one camera that had the water housing on it. And the cinematographer was on one of the boats filming all the dry scenes sort of, you know, from the boat. Are you rowing? This Lewis saying fuck you and clap. Sorry. Aplode, 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 aplode. Eso. You can even clap. Look, in the right. And. That's the action, you look here. So, huh? Okay, so look over there. Action. Beautiful, okay. That's it. You okay? Well, what happened is slowly that the boat sort of drifted from us and me and the actor were in the water and and it was a difficult scene like for, it was difficult for me because I have to constantly for a long time I was there again for like four hours kind of stay afloat keep the camera steady direct the actor and then the actor is doing also physical things look at Lucas and this is file what? Okay, you stay on them, I'm, I'm staying on him. Okay. Okay, wait, okay, go over there. Action. Are you up? Are you up? Cut. Beautiful. And long story short, I said cut, we finished the scene, and we're like, okay, you know, I'm exhausted, he's exhausted, and we're like, all right, let's grab onto the boat. We turn around and this boat is, you know, like maybe 20 feet now, but 20 feet when you're like, you're out of breath and you want to think, is it suddenly feels like a lot. No, no, oh, no, 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 no,
and everything's great you know they film it they get up on the boat well once you know we said cut you know the actors and then the cast and crew like like basically forgot about the fact that i'm still in the water and so this and these are you know pretty heavy boats all wooden boats and one boat starts basically getting pushed against the other and i realize basically it's gonna crush me like i'm basically riding between these two boats so i you know grab the camera which is difficult too because the camera has the little water housing and it's full of air so you can't like go you know just go underwater very easily with it because it's pulling you up so I, I just you know grabbed the last breath of air went under the boat I remember swam up on the other side and the sun was already by this point was long gone was dark already and yeah and i don't even know how i made it but all i know is like once i got back on the boat i think somebody helped me Feature shark moving next month. And one day. One day, half day. <laughs> I just collapsed. Like I was just exhausted. I've never felt that tired. Like those last few hours, just being in the water with the camera, and you know, I, I think it was. I was just purely running on adrenaline at this point. And uh, now I do got to admit, the ride back again, like well, 20 minutes to the shore was very nice because the sun was gone. It was this dusk. Actually got some little like shots was still getting while we were going back. We got back to the beach, was pitch black, you know, everybody says bye, you know. And I remember like I just was like, well, I don't know. Whatever I filmed, <laughs> that's what I have to work with. And that's kind of what happened. I remember the next day I sat down and I was just watching it with sort of with horror going like, oh my God. Okay, this I can maybe fix. Like a lot of the audio was bad. I had to basically knew right away I had to have like second unit sort of production because we did not get any of the like insert shots, like close-ups of the hand or, you know, like an actor's leg when the, you know, shark is supposed to bite them. We got nothing with the shark, like the little props and stuff we prepared because there was no time. You know, when I started editing the film, it took me about six months to edit. Again, a 20 minute film. Sort of, it felt like taking this broken puzzle with missing pieces and just putting it as best as I could and then figuring out, okay, can I make, replicate this piece or that piece that's missing. But I am happy to say that I did finish editing the film. So the film is edited, still not watchable because it's missing a lot of the effects. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. And again, I'm gonna be sharing the whole process, the journey of me, sort of how I used editing tricks, how I used a lot of these shots that I got with my friends and family, like in our pool, like back in the US or like on a lake or whatever. Like I got all these extra shots and kind of was piecing it together using also, like I said, special effects and all this stuff. So definitely it's an interesting now whole process of the whole post-production and using a lot of these really cool, you know, AI tools in DaVinci Resolve. So if you guys want to see that, if this is something that interests you, please subscribe. Let me know in the comment section below what you exactly want to see and just follow me on my website because I'm going to be putting all that stuff there. Plus, when the film is finally finished, I'm going to release it for free. You'll be able to watch it on my website. So again, subscribe to my newsletter. It's the best thing on my website. Anyways, that's it for this video. My name is Tom Antos and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.